Life in Bolton can be hard. Sometimes it feels like a jungle out here. So you feel that you had to nick somebody's bike in front of them to ring the police yeah. so you'd get locked up to get the help you needed? Yeah. That's your only option. You can't get clean on the streets. What I need to try and understand is, so you're living on £34 a week, how do you survive on £34 a week? Uh, I've been kicked out, been kicked out of my hostel. Then I've went back into the town all today, I've had a stroke, I'm a vulnerable person and I, I know they won't use me at all. As poverty's got worse, as universal credits come in, we find the situation now is actually that bad that people uh, you know, feel like committed suicide. This is Bolton in 2019. This was once a bustling market town. Now there's crushing poverty, homelessness, drug use and total isolation. We're a group of volunteers at Bolton Nice, a small charity fighting poverty in Bolton. We decided we had to get this message out. My name is Grant McCauley and here is what we found. More than 30, 40 yards across the road from where people are living and sleeping rough uh, is a major car dealership selling cars, anything from 40, 50 to 60,000. or a homeless person or maybe more than one um, I just can't believe that people are actually submitted to living like this in 2019 we're on just over the back of me here one of the busiest main roads in Bolton which is five minutes into the town centre to the left of me here is a rat's nest so obviously this makes it an environmental issue it's totally heartbreaking that people have to result to living in this so what's your life like at the moment off, being yeah. homeless? <laughs> and um, have you have you had much trouble with the enforcement team moving you on? Every day near enough. Are you not are you not getting no no where we're getting a flat? I'm sick of going in. I'm sick of going in. I feel for you, you know, I used to be homeless as well. And no, I know you. It's hard it's hard work, isn't it? Have you not heard about the food bank at Bolton Street? Bolton's the new centre. Oh, yeah. Have you not heard about it? No, that's what we're doing. Which one? Give it up. Oh, yeah, yeah, I've heard about that one. I could see that one as well on the Friday, 12 to 1, and you can get as much food as you want. Sandwiches, cooked food, welcome to come. Thank you, thank you for that. I overslept in, I overslept in car park by, by an hour and a half or something and, I, and I asked, when I got to the job centre from the interview for, uh, for, because they swapped me from the uh, from the SDS to that universal credit when I, when, I, when I explained to them look at the moment I said I'm whatever they went, they went tough basically I forgot what it's like sleeping in an ice bed, you know what I mean? I forgot what, it's, what it feels like just lie down, copy in a bed and not without having a bad back it's like the other week in car park on top whale or not I was fast asleep and some, someone just come along and volleyed me in my head for no reason. No, I didn't, I didn't, I didn't deserve so that. You suffered, you suffered yeah, attacks yeah, as well? Yeah, 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 I've yeah, been attacked, yeah, I didn't. Regularly? Or, not regularly, like, no. but, you know, it's only happened twice, but I didn't, I didn't deserve that. I, I didn't do nothing wrong. I mean, just because just I was sleeping, and then, well, what gives that, what gives the rights to that lad to kick me in the head? They didn't have the rights to do that. No. You know what I mean? I could have, I could have, I, I, I could have got up and started fighting back with him, but then I thought, and then I've already done that, then. I would have gone back to jail for, for a long time, you know what I mean? And I can't be bothered going back to jail. I've been going to jail since 1995, I mean. 
en grabar, ¿no? Fue bien. If you're mad and fairly gone, come to Bolton Nice, we'll take you on. <laughs> I'm going for a week. And you think you've got problems, pal? I woke up this morning with two cauliflower readers. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a girl that knows me on the ends. What did the sweet potato say to the pumpkin? I am what I am. <laughs> you must be bananas to come here. <laughs> <laughs> Don't ask me for any money, Joe, I'm peppered. <laughs> <laughs> it's been hard, I tell you. The last 15 months have been really hard. This has been a big help, but, but nice. Yeah. Helps me out, obviously. I, 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 I don't know what to do if this place were here. Yeah, get your food for the I can't keep out asking my friends for money. No. I've not had my gas on for the last couple of days because I've not got much on. So I get paid on Tuesday. I've got about one pound, 60 odd on. Yeah, that's just... Um, that's in Jimmy Mount's here. That's just shameful. Yeah, and I've not bought any tobacco either because I've not had foot, can't afford it. The thing is, when World War III kicks off, I'm not picking a rifle up to defend this dump. You know what I mean? Yeah. If they want all the young ones that I'm not doing I to get involved, I won't. I will. I'll, 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 I'll help and take it. Yeah. yeah. So you've got to the point where you thought there's no other option for you. You've I hate this country, I can't stand it. You've tried to take your own life yeah. and you've been brought back round. How long were you in hospital for? Uh, two weeks. Right, did, they, did they not bring any critical care to your bedside nothing. or anything like that? No counselling? Nothing. Nothing at all? I've, I've asked for counselling, I've asked for all sorts of stuff, but... Leave it away they, just, they just give me, uh, discharged me with medication. So I went to probation in Blackburn. I said, listen, I'm staying in this town, I'm going to do it the same, I'm killing someone. I said, get me to Bolton, that's where I'm from, we've got local connections. So I told you, if you have a local connection, you get housed. Yeah. I've been on the streets since I like, arrived here. People are not getting no help. There ain't helping nobody in Bolton, there ain't helping nobody in this, in this country. Eventually get back on my feet, uh, car, an holiday, uh, find somebody decent, a woman. I've been coming here with, to, uh, with these, with, helping out with these guys and we come to just build up a little bit more. And like I said, I would like to get back into work because I used to do caring as well on people. I would appoint me where I just walk to wake up every day. And some days I'm still the same. I don't have massive, you know, I don't want this, I don't want to care, I don't want millions of pounds, I just want just to get back to normal life. I just fell out with my girlfriend <laughs> yesterday. I've only had her about five weeks and, uh, oh, I think it's over now. <laughs> so that's life, isn't it? With help from ex Cory star Nigel Pavaro, we came up with a plan to get some publicity. We decided to reenact the Penny Hang. The Penny Hang was how people dealt with homelessness a hundred years ago. This was our rehearsal. We set up a washing line for people to sleep on like they did back then. It cost one old penny and the coffin was extra. It's not so, so long since there were people who, who did sleep in a town centre, but now the laws changed and people were actually sitting down in the wrong area, sleeping in the wrong area, trying to beg food, uh, money for food or trying to beg food, actually could have been arrested and, and taken away to uh, Manchester somewhere. They've made it a crime to survive. Right, really. And as many people aren't surviving. That's and, uh, right, yeah. There's more not making it as what do. The biggest difficulty is you've got people who want to commit suicide as well. They're actually, yeah. they've had enough. Yeah. And there is people who've done it. We had a lad last year, last year who actually uh, was refused help and then a day later was found dead on the town hall steps at Bolton. And I was still going out in Bolton, talking to people and listening to their stories. Yeah, we've come for a walk today, uh, just off Church Bank. Um, reports of people sleeping rough and homelessness, uh, but it looks like they've been moved on. But uh, if I move over here, you'll be able to see there's a sign that says, please dispose of your syringes in a sensible manner. Do not just throw them on the floor, you are putting people and children at risk. Um, so. Obviously, people were here, but they've been moved on the know yet any longer. So here we are now on Church Bank Car Park, which is literally about 50, 60 yards away from where luxury apartments will soon be built, on the site where we've just been, and also on this one, um, but also a stone's throw away from homeless people and total deprivation in modern day Britain. Probably this one here in the middle, there's one of my favourites. 
So somebody may be homeless, but they've got talent. We've been formed for five years and we support um, a range of families um, through poverty, through different reasons, through uh, mental health, through having uh, benefits caught, things like that, um, people that have like fled domestic abuse. I came into the Hobbit Club because um, my partner had severe mental health issues and then um, what happened was he didn't make his appointments on time so then they sanctioned his benefits. Right. He's now got to go through an appeal process and with that appeal process they said it can take up to six months mm. so he's relying on help from food banks and things and he's actually looking at um, losing his flat due to all of his benefits being cut so in my opinion i feel the system has massively failed these people and then they have to rely on yep. charities and food exactly. banks and yeah. things yeah. we've seen a massive increase every single year and it's probably at its highest right now in the multi-story car park um just a couple of minutes outside there and as you can see there's a uh, quite an assortment of uh, items on the floor. Uh, somebody's been sleeping rough here. Um, drug use, um, disregarded syringes, um, some sort of tablets that they've been taking, I'm not sure what they are. Pile of some clothes, whether someone needs to change the clothes for today, tomorrow, tonight or whatever. Um, a disregarded syringe just here on the staircase as you, as you actually come into the, the car park itself. Somebody has been sleeping here, it looks like they've moved them on, yet again. But definitely happening all around us folks, that's for sure. Loads of people have been contributing to this film and as he's been working on his rap. I woke up this morning and I didn't feel right. I turned on the TV to get some light. I'm on the curtains, I'll go outside. I can't feel like that, that's my rap. The Bailey's at the door, I can't take no more. No, 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 no. Don't call it me open stick. No food in the flat. Yeah. Can't to be the cat. I've lost my family. And now I'm leaving my home. We're here to feed the needy, not the greedy. What's the price? Be nice. <laughs> Back in the day, me, Azzy and Wayne went drinking round here and now look what's happened to it. Looking down and looking up, all, all the pubs and clubs have shut, or been let to close, gone to record brewing, particularly this one over here, and people are suffering for it. All, for what? Corporate greed, local and, and private developers to build luxury apartments and flats. Nothing, no social housing, all the private sector. A crying shame and it's all the way up and all the way around it's happening every day i used to come drink here meet my friends as it way lots of people 15 20 30 of us would meet up in there go for a walk around town go for a drink before you got your taxi home or walk home can't do it now because everything's gone and people now are suffering isolation and loneliness depression anxiety and everything else because they can't meet the friends because these places are shut they've gone 50, 60 yards over the back of there, you've got almost people living in tents and makeshifts. Terrible, absolutely terrible, heartbreaking. I nearly lost my home last year because of bedroom tax. Okay. They were chasing me for 300 and odd pound bedroom tax. That's more than what I get a month. Right. But I got a letter up with government stating I'm entitled to £1.84 a fortnight to live on. This Bolton Council? Yeah, I'd like to see them live on £1.84. So pay the gas, the electric and everything else, water rates. I'm on the breadline, but really, from day to day, I'm wondering where my next meal's coming from. Okay, so you come without, in? Without Bolton nights, hmm. I'd have been on my arse to be there. Right, what's it affected the most? Is it all more than one thing or everything all together or...? You know. I only really have two problems. Health and poverty. Health and poverty. The health is zip. Right. I've got a lot of things wrong with me. I get no help whatsoever getting it sorted out. Nothing. And poverty. So why do you why do you not why do you not get the help? So I don't get no help me, I've been up sick over eight years. Yeah, but the the system. Right. It doesn't work. I got nothing up with you doctor. Know. You know. You're screaming. Well, you're asking me if you even know of my name. 
right? You can't see me now. No, I'll, I'll show my, a payment, a signal payment. I can't remember what I said, I don't like, no offence to everybody who comes here. Right. I love to help them, but no offence to people who come here, but it's so bad, they have to come here. I agree. They ain't getting no help. It's not as if they've got thousands in bank to spend it all on beer or what. Well. My wife said to me, she said, what are we doing now? I said, well, we're delivering a bed to someone in there who's going to need it. She said, it's Boxing Day. I said, it might be Boxing Day to you, but to yeah, the charity, yeah, to the charity yeah, someone needs a bed. It's a lot more than a food bank. Yeah. Because obviously they've got clothes, furniture. Yeah. But it's not just that, it's the skills, the people, yeah, the yeah. volunteers. In a lot of charities, you, you get someone gets a little job and you get, you know, you've got this little title, you know, you're the chief exec, you're a deputy chief exec, you're a manager, you, you know, you're this. And they go in and then they get the job and then they've got to, then they're, they're trying to do the job. But our people have come from the bottom. Our yeah. people have actually been there. Yeah. They've had problems themselves. Yeah. And they know exactly what someone walks out the door, yeah. what it's like. There's 30 volunteers and people come and people go and people actually have found that, they found a little job, they found a life. Yeah. We then went out to reenact the penny hang. We were asking people if they thought things had got better or worse in the last hundred years. I think it has changed. I think it's got worse. I think it's got worse. Really? I think it's got worse. We've gone, in, we've gone into a society where we always try to put a better life for our children. It's going backwards. It's going backwards because this hasn't changed at all. It's gone brilliantly. A lot of people didn't know anything about the penny hanging. Now we've explained the under, you know, where the saying comes from. Obviously a lot of people didn't realise how, how bad it was. And I spoke to loads of people that are struggling with the benefits or they've had them stopped. It's really sad, you know. And the leaflet's going well. Lots of people are interested. Um, just noticed that round the corner where there was a perfectly good footpath, the councillors tore it up and they put in a new one down just to make it look nice. I'm sure they could put that money together, you know, towards housing and finding somewhere for the people that are on the streets to stay in the evenings. It's coming winter now. It's dreadful. A lot of people doesn't know, you know, but this is quite an awareness that uh, in 1800 like people were paying a penny to sleep on the line but it's i don't think anything's changed now people are actually it's gone worse because people don't get anything and they sleep on the road and payments and uh, yeah. they find a place where to sleep safely yeah. the problem is not getting solved and it's getting worse and worse and worse you know that's what i think yeah. uh, i hope the things gets better but i think it's going to take a very long time we then asked this homeless person if he'd rather to prefer sleeping on the line as opposed to sleeping on the street, and he said he'd rather sleep on the line. Yeah, I'd be happier. Yeah, I'd yeah. be laughing at that. Yeah, <laughs> all right. It's uncomfortable. I think if you stayed like this for a while, your back would hurt. Yeah, it's quite uncomfortable. Probably comfier than sleeping on the floor, though. It's gone quite well. It's been a positive response from the people of Bolton. Uh, and we've had quite a few people actually asking questions and. Uh, offering help and I think just the raising awareness bits really help because of people are walking past and trying to avoid us and then once, once they realise what we're doing they, they actually start talking and start telling us about their own experiences. And we ended up getting a fair bit of media coverage so I suppose in the end we succeeded in doing what we set out to do which was raise awareness to what's going on. Job done. I was at rock bottom the last two years when I'm coming here has lifted me up and uh, back up and running. So I'll be back in work soon, so it's all good. Fantastic. Um, good group of people and all that. If it worked for Bolton Nice, don't know what I'd have done.